Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Staying safe. Uh, COVID testing changed uh, a, a little bit uh, a week ago. We test now on Sunday, we test on Tuesday, and we test on Thursday. And then we will get the results Friday before we go to Miami. So uh, that keeps uh, any player or any team from going to the side of the game uh, and having to turn around and not play, which I think is, is really a, a, a great adjustment. And then what happens is that uh, we test after the game at Miami, at the stadium, uh, and Miami does the same after the game. And then they report back to us. We report back to them if there were any positives after the game uh, that there should be some concerns about. So uh, that's the, the protocol that has changed for the ACC uh, over the last week or, or so. Uh, practice has been great this week. I, I told the guys this morning that um, uh, the practice should have been the same last week as it is this week. And, and when our, our program gets to where it needs to be, uh, we will not be practicing to the level of the opponent. We'll be practicing well because we're trying to get better. And that's really, really important. Um, I do think right now that, that we have the best league in the country with the, the addition of Notre Dame this year. You look at Notre Dame, you look at Clemson, uh, you look at Miami. Uh, we've been up and down, but, but we've shown the ability to, to be really good. There are a lot of other good teams in our league uh, like us, but Miami and Clemson and, and um, Notre Dame would be considered great teams right now. There, there are three teams in the top 10, and, and um, that, that's pretty, pretty special. So um, I've told the guys that they're, they're playing against um, a top 10 team for two out of the last three weeks. And, and good for them that we're playing a game that really matters at the end of the year. And that's what you want to be doing. This is championship level stuff because you're, you're playing for a, a chance to go to a, a potentially a major bowl. And uh, last year we were trying to get to a bowl on this game. Uh, we're just trying to get bowl eligible. So uh, we've, we've put ourselves in a, in a different category right now. Uh, most of our finals are in and, and uh, we're going to be right at a, a core um, term GPA of a, a 3.0. Uh, so I'm really, really proud of the guys and, and especially some of those freshmen that uh, their first experience in college has been on Zoom. They haven't even been to class yet. So it's, uh, it's been a very, very different experience for them, but I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them. All the guys are bowl eligible, uh, which you worry about that. Um, uh, you even worry about some of your seniors that, that might not have taken it as serious because uh, they're looking at the draft and they didn't think about the bowl, but they, they've all taken it very seriously and, and I, am, uh, I am proud of them. Uh, next week's schedule, uh, we, we told the guys that if you want to go home with your parents after the game in Florida, you can do that because we do have some guys from Florida that it would be much easier to, to drive with their parents, ride with their parents home and uh, a lot uh, less expensive. And because of that, we, we moved our, our senior banquet back till the 20th. So we will not have uh, any activities on uh, the 13th when we get home. We'll get home about midnight. Uh, and then all of the players will be uh, allowed to, to go home for, for the week. And we'll come back on the 19th, which is Saturday. Uh, we, will, um, we, we will have our COVID test at one o'clock so we can practice on Sunday the 20th. Hopefully on the 20th, we will know where we're playing in our bowl game. And um, uh, that day we'll review Miami. We'll have our, our first bowl practice and we'll have the banquet that night. And then we'll most likely, uh, depending on the date of the bowl, stay here and practice uh, between the, the 20th and, and the, the time for the bowl game. So uh, could be here for Christmas and even possibly New Year's. So that's why we thought it was really important to let the guys have a, a break and a week off. They'll still be working out uh, under the direction of Coach Hess. They'll still be talking to our nutritionists, uh, but they will have the ability to, to go home if they, if they want to. And obviously uh, being very, very careful as, as COVID is, is rampant across the country again. Um, but we, we did feel like the, not being able to, to, to take a break much since August 6th, the guys needed a break. Um, signing day will, uh, uh, will be the same for us uh, as, as normal because you couldn't see kids on signing day anyway. 
So we, we hope to get, uh, we, we always try to get all of our, our signed scholarships in by 10 o'clock in the morning on signing day, they can sign at seven. Um, so we, we start talking to them and, and get them in as early as they can. And then if they have a ceremony, uh, they can have the ceremony when they want it. If they would rather us not release their, their scholarship that they've signed until their ceremony, uh, we try to work with them any way we can. But we try to get you those names as soon as we can, uh, knowing you've got a lot going on and it, it helps you um, when you start looking at, at uh, the, the results of, of all of our, our signees. Um, this is not the Miami team we faced last year. Uh, the, the biggest differences I see are Quincy Roche, uh, who we tried to recruit here. We played this time last year in a bowl game at, uh, against Temple. Uh, and Jalen Phillips, those are two of the best pass rushers in the country. Uh, they, they play the run good, but man, they can disrupt quarterbacks and we haven't done very well in, in those situations. And the Eric King, you, you go back to their quarterback last year, he had 30 of 38 against us. He had a great game against us last year, but, but seemed to have an up and down year. But the fact that uh, Miami could get one of the best quarterbacks in the country to come and and Anna, it seems like a, a great young person that's really been a good leader for them. Uh, that, that's just lifted their entire team. So uh, our question mark will be, can we compete uh, against a top 10 team um, with confidence and with toughness uh, for 60 minutes? Because uh, uh, we got whipped in the second half at, at Notre Dame with our, our offensive front seven. And uh, this will be a, a huge challenge to see how we respond to, to this one. Questions. All right, thanks coach. If you have a question, please use the raised hand function. Uh, our first question today will come from Taylor Vipolis. Hey coach, how big of a challenge is it to prepare for a dual threat quarterback like DR King since that is something that is so hard to replicate in a practice type setting? Uh, it's really tough, Taylor, it, uh, the same as Ian Book. I mean, here we, we talked all week about keep, keeping Ian in the pocket. Well, it's easy to say, it's hard to do and said, when he gets out of the pocket, he's really, really dangerous. Well, that's why he gets out of the pocket and uh, you can contain him, but it's hard to tackle him. And, and if you look at these two quarterbacks, they're very similar in, in what Ian does and, and, uh, and, and what uh, Derek does, because you just, um, they, they can hurt you in so many ways. And, and the other thing that Derek's done, he's improved his throwing so much since the, even the first of the year when he was at Houston. He's a very accurate passer now. So uh, that's the, the, the key to this ball game. So you got to stop the running game as you always do, but you can't let the quarterback make the plays that, that he's, he's been making uh, and, and he's made them against everybody. And, and you, can't, uh, um, you can't let him do what Ian Book did to us. And then I saw a stat where Carolina has missed single digit tackles for three straight games now. In your opinion, how much more leeway does a defense have for mistakes when it can get ball carriers on the ground the first attempt? Taylor, it's, uh, we, we are getting a lot better. Um, the, the inexperienced secondary is, is playing better and they're tackling better in space. Uh, obviously, the, the Western Carolina players weren't as hard to tackle as, as the Notre Dame players or as the Miami players will be. So that helps your tackling some. Uh, but but we've really, really improved in, in communication in the back end. Um, our our um, ability to stop the run in the front seven um, and the, the tackling in space o over the last four or five weeks. I think we're uh, sixth in the, the conference now in total defense. So we're, we're making some progress. And the, the other thing that uh, um, we, we've made some, we've got some, some sacks, but we still got to improve in that area. And, we stripped some balls from lesser players last week and still didn't get them all, but, but uh, uh, hopefully we're, we're starting now to get more pressure on the quarterback and learning how to, to force some turnovers. Uh, the other thing we did, Taylor, this week is, and we've done this the last four or five weeks, we did it for Ian as well, is the, the, the last period of the day, J um, Jacoby Criswell goes down with our defense and he takes a one minute offense against our defense. So they, they are seeing Jacoby um, running around back there and, and, and trying to at least uh, give them some picture of, of, of what it's going to be like to try to tackle these guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question comes from Alyssa Ray. 
Coach, I know this schedule has been all jumbled because of COVID, but be able to end the season against a top 10 team, what opportunity does that present as far as ending the regular season on a high note, specifically going into the bowl season? Yeah, uh, Alyssa, the seniors, uh, uh, four years ago, they didn't go to a bowl. Three years ago, they didn't go to a bowl. Last year and this week, they were fighting to get to a bowl. They didn't care where they were going. And, and now they're playing a, a top 10 team with a, a chance to uh, go to a big bowl. So I, I told them, um, congratulations to you. It looks like we, we've got a great chance to get an 11th game in, which who thought that would happen? And it's not happening across the country in a lot of different conferences. Uh, so good, good for them that they've done that. Uh, good knock on wood. And I, I don't want to jinx us here. But uh, so far, we haven't been the reason that anybody's canceled a game. So good for these guys that, uh, and, the, and the coaches that they've done that. And, and these guys should be very, very proud of themselves that they, they've uh, moved this program forward and uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, we're, we're running up that ladder very quickly. Uh, we're 17th in the, the uh, one poll and 20th in the, in the other two polls. But in the college football poll, we're, we're 17th um, uh, with a chance to move up. So uh, the guys understand uh, today, I, I, I really – I uh, was just watching them practice this week. They're competing and having fun and all that. And I said, do you realize where you are? Do you realize what you're doing? And do you realize how special this week is? And, and did you even think uh, that even last year you'd, you'd be playing a, a one loss Miami team in the top 10 for, for a chance at a major bowl? Uh, so I want them to be proud of themselves, but I want them to also understand uh, getting here is one thing. There, there's a next step by winning the game. And, and nobody expects us to win. I, I saw on the uh, college football playoff uh, show last night, they've already got Miami and Texas A&M uh, written in for the Orange Bowl. So um, I thought that was nice of them to help me with motivation. And a lot of the talk around the quarterbacks of this game, I mean, two of the top QBs in the country. What do you hope to see out of Sam Howell this weekend? I want Sam to be Sam. We, we've got to protect him better. Uh, when, when we give him time with our skill, uh, Sam's done a tremendous job and, and usually Alyssa if we run the ball uh, well enough to, to keep things tied down up front then our RPOs and our play action are really effective uh, when we haven't run the ball well it's when we've been in trouble and and Miami's really good at stopping the run so uh, I think that's the the key is that that we need to give uh, Sam time when we give Sam time he does a great job thanks coach thank you all right, let's go over to Andrew Jones, please. Hey, Coach, going back to dealing with Derek King, when you're going up against a guy who can do all the things he can, what is sort of the pecking order of what the defense must do? Is it, is it discipline? Uh, do they have to just be really gifted in order to deal with a guy like that, or is there something else? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's both. There's, there's some scheme involved, but uh, you've got to be gifted enough to tackle him. We were in positions to tackle Ian Book and just didn't. And then when you watch other people, they haven't either. And, and I, I don't, uh, uh, people still haven't given him the credit that he deserves. And DeEric's the same way. He's, um, he, he's very, very difficult to deal with. So uh, you, you say, keep him in the pocket. Well, you, you get pressure on him. You're trying to get him in the pocket and then he just makes you miss him. And then he runs outside of the pocket. So uh, there, there's a certain amount of, um, uh, ability it's going to take to to try to corral him to keep him inside the pocket, um, and and then when he gets outside, you got to chase him down. And he's 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 strong. He's a strong runner. He's kind of like an extra running back back there. And then by scheme, you've got to have somebody sometimes to just uh, spy on him and 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 try to make sure that you you've got somebody that can run him down. And uh, Chaz is our fastest guy, most likely. So you you'd like to see Chaz make some plays in that area. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, over to Ross Martin, please. Hey, Mac, you mentioned uh, recruiting Quincy Roche. I was wondering what went, how that kind of happened and, and what happened, I guess, um, in trying to get him to, to UNC in the grad program. Was it on you all side, no space, or his side, or what? Well, uh, it's a little bit of all of the above, I think, Ross. We, we were uh, looking at, at numbers, but uh, that could have worked out. But uh, right now, we don't have an, the easiest path to a graduate program. Uh, so that's been tough for us to get graduate students. And we're still working on that. We're still trying to make progress. But uh, um, 
right now the the transfer portal and the graduate transfer program is so important across the country and um, um, a lot of people have done a great job with it we have not and and um, we're, we're not going to be a transfer program but but uh, people are are utilizing it uh, Virginia got some tremendous players in the transfer program and Miami's got guys that weren't there last year that have made a complete difference in their program so uh, that that's an area we need to keep looking at and keep improving because uh, we we need a few players here and there. Everybody does every year, and with what the NCAA is doing, uh, they're allowing guys to just transfer. It's uh, uh, one of the coaches in our league said that now when you're you're playing another team, the way the transfer portal is and the one year transfer rule, you'll have people evaluating the players during the game. Uh, see who you want to go talk to after the game, see if you can get them to transfer. So uh, obviously you're not supposed to have contact with those players, but a lot of people do. Uh, so it's a, that's an area, Ross, that, that we've got to uh, try to grow in and, and evaluate and, and see uh, what we can do to do a better job because it's just, it hasn't been part of our, our process. What makes uh, the grad transfer at UNC so tough? Is it is it the classes that UNC offers or trying to get them in? What, what's the it, challenge? It, it's, it's getting them in. It's, it's a very difficult thing to get in graduate school here uh, because it's so hard to, to be accepted anyway. Uh, so that's been very difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from C.L. Brown. Hi, uh, Mac, how much do you prefer, you just kind of hinted at it, how much do you prefer the underdog role when you can sell to the players that, you know, no one believes in us, no one believes they're going to win? Well, CL, we didn't have it for 16 years at Texas. Everybody was trying to beat <laughs> us because we, we were the big boy all the time. So really, I'd rather be the team that everybody thinks is the best team. That That's, uh, that's what we were for, for those 16 years, and we haven't. Uh, it's funny. I, I think we've probably only been an underdog uh, in in before the game in the Notre Dame game. The rest of the games, people have at least given us an even chance or a, a chance to win. Uh, but uh, uh, Miami has has definitely earned the right to to be the team that everybody expects to win in this game. Yes, and um, you've mentioned uh, Roche and Phillips before um, in these press conferences. How how does the front four of Miami? compared to what you saw against Notre Dame? They're uh, just like the Notre Dame bunch that whipped us. And, and that's the biggest concern going into this game is, is uh, will we be able to, to hang in there with their front four on defense because they're really, really talented, good, quick. They move a lot. They penetrate. They put pressure on quarterbacks. Uh, they're, they're doing all the things that we've had trouble with. So I, I think one of the um, – the, the biggest keys to this game, CL, we'll be able to watch uh, and, and see if, I, if our front seven offensively can, can hang in there with theirs. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach, that was the last question we have in the queue. So I, I, think, uh, I think we're coming to a close here. Thank you, Mark. It's, uh, it's in, in, interesting. This is the last game of the season. And uh, I guess our, our normal last game would have been two weeks ago. Uh, so the, the season has been long, but appreciate you all. And, and I know it's been different for all of us and uh, all of us are uh, hoping that this stuff comes to an end so we can get back to some normalcy. Uh, but you, you all have, uh, you all handled this really, really well. Um, our, our players and our, our coaches, I think, have handled it really well. And, uh, and, and uh, what could have been a, a very, very uncomfortable year for all of us uh, we, we've all been uh, patient with each other and, and tried to make this thing work. So uh, thank you very much, and I will see you Saturday after the game.